Hi, I'm Tim, co-founder of App and Flow Games, uh, a pretty new indie game development studio based in Berlin. And we're making a game called Kingdom Builders, which you can also see on the website here right now. And this video, I want to show you our approach, how we create our 3D world um, and show you how also you can maybe use some of these tips to create your own big levels and worlds fully in 3D in Unity uh, without the name of a huge level designer or artist team. So maybe first some info about our game. Uh, I'm showing a quick trailer here right now. You can also check it out yourself. Um, so you're playing like a, a, a king or queen character um, and you're creating your kingdom, creating your settlement, uh, create shelter for your villagers who then help you, you know, building up your empire, uh, defending it against raids and enemies and exploring also a big world. So we are a really small team of only four people, but we wanted to really create yeah, a, a big world. And how do you do that with, with only limited resources? This is what I'm going to show you uh, right now. But first, uh, I would love if you would check out our website, kingdombuildersgame.com and join us on our Discord. Link is directly on the website and the link to the website is down in the description. So please check it out. Join us on Discord. Check out the game on Steam. Uh, put it on your wish list. All of these things help us so much with growing this project. Um, and yeah, early access release will start in only a few weeks. All right, so you maybe know uh, 2D tile maps. I have like a blog post of Unity open right here. Um, and with 2D tile maps, the whole idea is you only have a bunch of sprites, like maybe just a few cliffs and walls and some, some grass platforms. And with only these few sprites, you can create a big level or even a whole world with it, which is amazing for small teams. Now we wanted to do the same, but for 3D. So what we are doing, we are creating a 3D world based of 3D tiles. So it's not just isometric, but it's actually fully 3D. And I'm gonna hop in right now exactly how we do this. So uh, let's go to Unity. Um, and here in Unity, um, you can see basically our first area of the game. This is like where, where, the, um, where the player will start out and, and you know, saw all, a bunch of scenes from it from the trailer as well. Um, and as you can already see, it is like uh, it, it follows like a grid structure, right? So uh, all of the tiles here are like four by four by four uh, meters, basically. And it's all individual tiles, like each in here on the ground is like a box. If I you know, show it here, it's just a box. Uh, and then here on the wall is like a different tile, which has like a nice, nice, uh, you know, some, some deformations and like the, uh, some corner for the grass and that kind of stuff. And how we create this, because this was ta would take a long time to create by placing it manually. And if you've ever, you know, did something in the Unity editor, you know, it can be really tedious to make everything align perfectly. You know, maybe sometimes it doesn't snap perfectly or you make a mistake. And then you have something like this and it really doesn't look nice. So our approach is that we generate it completely from code uh, with height map textures, basically. So uh, let's go into Photoshop. And this here is our height map texture for this first area. You might recognize the shape. The black here is basically the area where you can walk and the lighter grays are where, yeah, where there's like some, some elevation here. And let's just change it immediately right now um, so you can really see what the benefit is. So maybe uh, I want to get rid of this, this little bump here. So I just pick the black color uh, and draw on it just put it away and maybe want to create a hole down down here maybe like this yeah whatever right um and now let's just export it as a png save it to our project and now let's go back in unity and we have a bunch of uh, like custom editor tooling uh, that will now allow us to update this this 3d world directly um, so let me turn off this we can check out uh, this now, uh, which is basically just putting a big sprite with a, with a height map in. And you see right now the area uh, doesn't have a new changes. We have some set fighting, don't worry about that. Because this bump here, this little hill, uh, I had deleted this in a texture. Um, but now what I can just do uh, is just can click generate here on this generator group. And we'll now take a few seconds. It will run through a bunch of editor scripts 
that basically reads uh, from this texture and then creates the tiles accordingly. So let's wait a little bit to see the end result and then I can also show you a little bit of the code of what's actually going on. All right, now we're back. Um, now everything is created, I can just turn it on. And here we see our new environment, which is uh, really nice. So you see like the, the little hill here is gone now, and we have our hole over here. And oh, this, <laughs> this is actually interesting. There's also a little bit of purple here. Uh, so that means um, that uh, a, a certain tile mesh is actually missing from our tile set. So maybe this is something I can check out later and, and fix, it's really easy. But you see already the, the approach here. Uh, all we had to do in Photoshop is change a bunch of pixels, click on generate, wait a couple of seconds, and boom, now a whole level is now edited. And you know uh, you could do this with, with a lot more, you could do this easily with your whole world. Because what we then also have, like this is the first area, we have also like a, a second area here, uh, where we also have you know, a bunch of more a uh, bunch of more environments basically and this is how you can create a really big world if you just add more and more of these areas and again each area is just a texture of 32 by 32 um, so it's really easy to to scale this quite quite quickly all right but how is this working let's check out some code um so the first thing i think is the height map generator which is running basically first and it goes into here the, the texture height mapper and this is the very first step really really easy uh, you have your 2d texture that you just load uh, and then here in two for loops you just go through each pixel of the of the texture you get the color and since it's just a black and white image we can only read from the red value of the color and we are setting the height from that so how we're doing this is because you know the 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 color it could be anything right from from zero to one um, but we want to have everything like on a grid because it's like tile based. Uh, so we have in a setting, we have um, specified like the, the step size, like like what the what the stepping value is. And then we just round this this float value to specific ints for for the height. Um, and then we have it just stored uh, in in basically a, a, a 2D array where the for, for each uh, tile we have like the, the height value in it. And then what comes next is basically the tile placement generator. Uh, if you want to check out all the details, you maybe want to pause the video, but maybe it's not even that helpful because it's relying on a bunch of other classes. But the thing is, right, if we go back into Unity real quick, um, if you would just have uh, cubes, right, you could, you're already finished basically, because then you now have this, this height map data and you can just at each height uh, for each tile, you can just spawn the cube with a, with the correct size, and then this would already work, right? That's just you know it would maybe look a bit more like Minecraft. But what we wanted to do is uh, a little bit more uh, sophisticated, let's say, is you see depending on on where the tile is, we have a different mesh, which is the whole idea of tile maps, right? Because here we have like whoops, here we have like a wall. And it would look really weird if the wall would just be like just a cube, right? You can do it, it's a different style, but we wanted to give it a more natural feel and kind of hide a tiny little bit this, this grid-like tile feeling. So um, for different uh, positions and situations, we have like different meshes. So this is like a wall tile, right? That has like some, you know, some more deformations. You know, the, the, the mesh is such a little bit different and we have like also for these types of corners, basically where you have two walls, or here is also, uh, you know, like an inverted, inverted corner. So we have just different meshes um, for for each situation, basically. Um, and now the question is, of course, if you have these bunch of meshes, uh, where do you decide which gets picked when? And for this, uh, we have something that we call rule tiles. Uh, which is a bunch of scriptable objects. So for each situation, uh, we have one of these rule tiles. So let's check out maybe the uh, one wall rule tile and let's put on this. And here we basically say um, what kind of neighbors are allowed for this tile. Um, so for the, for the one wall thing, um, what's happening is 
uh, this is basically here and it's like looking from top. So here in this area, uh, there must be a tile and then directly in front of it, which is the red here, there must not be a tile. And gray is kind of, there can be a tile or not, it doesn't really matter. Um, because like if we if we would have a tile here, right, where the, where the red was, um, then it wouldn't make sense to have like the wall here because it should just then just, you know, go go like this, like just follow follow the edge of, of the of the elevation. Um, it's it's a tiny a tiny bit complicated, so maybe I rushed a little bit through it. Uh, let me know if you want to uh, have more in detail uh, explanations about these things. This video, uh, I just wanted to show our approach and give you like a rough overview of how we do this. Um, right. Um, so maybe another question can also be, how do you create these meshes? Um, because you you know, at least for our art style, uh, we show something that's kind of simple. And yeah, we're doing this just in Blender. So let me hop on here. And here uh, we just have a bunch of different tiles, basically, that just make up our 3D tile map. Um, so the first thing uh, is this one, which is just a cube, right? It's the cube you also saw here for the ground. You don't need anything, just a cube, that's fine. You could put stuff on it as well, right? But for us, we just wanted a different cube. But now for the wall, um, the the whole point of uh, of walls is that it always needs to be like tileable, right? And with a cube, it's really simple to have a tileable, right? You just, you know, you can just put it like this, and it works perfectly. Um, but with uh, with a wall, you have to be, you know, you have to be a bit more careful. So let's check out. This is how our wall looks like, basically. So um, yeah, we can put it right next to each other, a bunch. Uh, a bunch of times and you know you don't really see uh, the transition uh, especially in in unity with the materials we add you don't see a transition um, and you could even uh, place it on top of each other whoops i have to duplicate first place it on top of each other and of course uh, here you you do see it of course um, but again if you look at it from afar and it also depends on the art style for us this worked uh, quite nicely, but for us it was really important that when placing them right next to each other, that it's basically seamless. So let's have it have a look in Unity. I mean, you can see that it follows a grid, uh, but I would say it's it's pretty much seamless, right? So uh, how you can do this? Um, maybe I can just show that real quick. Um, let's just create a new a new one, right? Why, sh why shouldn't we? So I'm just gonna create a cube. Go into local view, scale it times two. Um, yeah, and now let's let's do a wall. Um, so maybe how do we want to do this? Maybe we do something like this. So we subdivided it a bunch of times, and now I only select these edges. And now um, I subdivide it again. Sorry, before that I was inserting edge loops with Control R. Now I'm subdividing and here is a really nice trick in this uh, subdividing tool. And maybe let's put the number of cuts to two or three. And now the, the exciting thing is the fractal. So just drag this and you see it kind of randomly distorts the positions of, of each vertex, which is amazing, right? Um, maybe we put it along normal uh, because this way you can see that it if we don't do this, it goes like to the down below and up top, which is maybe not so nice. So let's do a long normal, uh, check out a bunch of random seeds and, you know, just get a feel of what we like. Maybe this is even nice. And boom, now we, we have some some variation, right? Um, if you have like a low poly art style, it may, it may be even nice to have the normals flat like this. We have, we don't want to show our topology in our art style. So uh, we rather do smooth shading, uh, smooth shade smooth, and and do it like this basically. Uh, and you know, for for some for some things that are more specific, we maybe mark them sharp so that in some cases, ah, you don't see too well here, but then it sticks out a little bit. Um, and now you have a wall, but now it's not really tileable yet because if I place it right next to each other. Uh, you can see, yeah, this doesn't work. There's like holes in it and, you know, this doesn't work. Um, so what we can do now, let me delete this. Um, we have to make the right side and the left side of this mesh align perfectly. So we can just select both of these now, go into edit mode. 
and uh, what I will do, I will always make this side snap to the to the side of the other cube. So I'll select this, select this, selection to active, boom. Maybe go into wireframe. I have to do this for all of these now. Selection to active. Make sure you select them in the right order. Uh, this is here, and this is here. Boom. Um, material view, and yeah, now it already works, right? You can just place them. Uh, right next to each other and this is really nice so what you might did i make a mistake uh maybe i made a small mistake oh yeah i made a small mistake uh let's see du -du 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 -du. wireframe mode select to active this should work now let's test it again yes this is really nice so it works um, from a topology perspective, like the vertices align perfectly, but the normal stone, that's why you still, it doesn't seem completely seamless because you can see the normals are like not working perfectly. And this, <laughs> this can sometimes be a bit of a hassle. Um, like I don't have a perfect solution for this. Um, what I ended up doing, and let me see what the fastest way to do this right now is is i added uh here a loop cut maybe like this and i also on this side also a loop cut maybe like this and now i make sure that these normals you can see it i have like this line display for the normal one, that they are exactly the same so that they are completely facing the uh, x axis basically so i make all of the vertices align perfectly on on the x side basically so how this works, I go here, uh, active element uh, on this side and select this first, then this, scale x zero. And this will make the inner vertex uh, move to the same x position as the outer vertex. So let's do it like this. And now these should be fine. Check in top view, you see all these normals are completely going in the x direction. Perfect. Here, not so much, so let's do it here as well. In inner vertex first, outer vertex then. Do it for all of these. And I'm rushing a bit through this, I know. Again, if you want to have some more details, let me know in the comments. I'll gladly make a more in-depth tutorial. Okay, this should hopefully work. <laughs> uh, I'm also doing this just live. No, it does not work. Why does it not work? All right, I found the problem. Um, the problem was that we still had to apply an edge split modifier. And now you see, we basically cannot see any difference in the normals and this is working perfectly fine. So yeah, that was basically the, the approach that uh, we used for all of these different tiles. Of course, it's a little bit more complicated if you want to make them tileable vertically as well and all that kind of stuff. And you have a bunch of different cases that you have to cover with also these kinds of corners, etc. pp. Um, but yeah, this is how we do the tiles basically. And yeah, this is a rough overview of how you can create a 3D time map system. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a lot of custom code definitely that uh, you have to write. Um, but I think the core principle is not that difficult. And yeah, you can definitely do a lot of it. Um, in uh, future tutorials, I can maybe, maybe go into how we place other objects in our scene, like we do with the trees here, because we also do that um, with a similar approach where we just have textures and they get generated from a textures and then placed dynamically in the level. So you, you, we don't have to place anything manually in, in, uh, from the trees. Um, and also I can maybe go into how we do the materials because you might see that the materials uh, also are completely seamless and the way we do this is that it's completely procedural um, and maybe I can go into shader graph next time and show you how this works. All right, um, yeah, so this was our approach, how we do 3D tiles. Hopefully you picked up something from that. I hope it was interesting. Um, and yeah, let me know if this was helpful, if you would like to see more, if you didn't understand something. Um, and yeah, please check out our game. I would immensely uh, appreciate it. Join us on Discord, wishlist the game on Steam. Um, yeah, we would love to grow this project. And well, thanks for watching and see you next time.